Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. The question today is, is God fair part two? Now, if you missed part one, you could send away for it. All you need to do is call the number on the screen. We'll be happy to send you out part one. And you could have also a, uh, you could have a, a part, you could have a DVD of this program also for free. Now the question is, is God fair? A lot of innocent men, women, and children have lost everything in the Houston area. They've lost their homes, they've lost their cars, they've lost their businesses, they've lost everything. Is God perhaps punishing? us punishing the United States of America and all these innocent people who have done nothing, you know, to cause a punishment upon themselves? Is that, maybe that's the case? Or maybe it's a wake-up call. We need to wake up. Did you know that Houston is the fifth largest city in the United States of America? Yeah. And it was hit with a terrible storm, Harvey, which decimated, which caused untold damages. Now, we have Hurricane Irma coming up toward Florida. And it's going to hit Florida this weekend. It's going to be a disaster. One disaster following another. Is God fair? Well, we're going to try to answer that question to, on today's program. But first, we have two important booklets that we'd like to share with you today. The first booklet is Lazarus and the Rich Man. And it asks the question, do people burn forever in a hell fire? Thousands have asked for the true explanation of Lazarus and the rich man. Here is what the Bible says. Let's always look in the Bible for truth. The second booklet is, Where are Enoch and Elisha? Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Yet the Bible reveals that they're not in heaven today. Well, where are they? Here's the astonishing truth. So you can have these two booklets. You can have a DVD of this program for free. All you need to do is call the number on the screen. We never ask the public for money. Just call us up, we'll get them in the mail to you, and they'll be on its way. Let's go to the Bible. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. And here Jesus is speaking in Matthew 24, and we're looking at verse 3. Matthew 24, verse 3. And it says here, As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? This word world is the word aeon, which is the word Greek word, age. What would be the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man 
deceive you. He said it once. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. He said it twice. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. What's a rumor of a war? The same word means reports of wars. And we have reporters reporting wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Well, we have today a, a, a chance of having a World War III starting with North Korea. So North Korea is causing a lot of problems here, and the United States may act pretty soon, and we might have World War III coming. Watch what Jesus says. He says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. What's the difference between a nation and a kingdom? Well, a nation is one group of people, like the United States of America is one nation, North Korea is one nation. Now, kingdoms are groups of nations, fighting against groups of nations. Watch what Jesus says. He predicts, there shall be famines and pestilences, besides wars, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you, this is Christians, up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. There's a lot of sins out there, but a lot of sinners. And a lot of people are leaving the churches. But he who shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So Jesus predicted a lot of these problems. Let's look at some news clippings here. Uh, this first one, Eustonians mark Labor Day sorting through ruins. They're, they're going through the ruins trying to salvage what they can. It's terrible, a terrible situation. Let's look at this one. Hurricane Harvey fuels spike in gas prices. Do you see gas prices are starting to go up? Well, that's only the beginning. They're going to go up much higher, maybe even double. Because that whole area has to do with gas and oil. Here's another one. Harvey ruins worse. Harvey reigns worse than the worst case scenario in Texas. This was the worst Texas ever saw. And it came at a bad time. And here's another one. Harvey expected to slam the region's economy. Region's economy is expected to go down. And here's one more. Here's one more. Uh, shelter running short of space. The shelters are running short of space for people. And what a shame that that's going to be. And, well, let's do perhaps one more. Talking about Islamic State claims Egypt's attack 
on Christians. Many Christians are being killed in the Mideast. Many are losing their heads. Heads are being chopped off. And there are all kinds of problems that we're having here in the United States. And here is the last one of them all. I hope you can read this. Let's put it down here where maybe you could read it better. And it says here that Trout Dale, Oregon, wildfire smoke chokes the West. A growing Oregon wildfire covered parts of Oregon's metropolitan, metropolitan area Tuesday with ash and prompted the shutdown of a lengthy stretch of highway. Well, this whole smoke is coming over the mountains and it's, it's affecting us. And it says here that, that the National Interagency Fire Center in Boise, Idaho, a federal agency that coordinates wildfire fighting, says 80, 80 large fires were burning on 2,200 square miles in nine western states. Now that's the end of the clippings. Now this is, we're choking here in Las Cruces. If you're choking and you're coughing, it might just be because of the smoke that's coming over from the wildfires that are happening out here out west. Wow. This is a terrible, terrible situation that we're facing today. Uh, it's unbelievable. Let's go now to Matthew chapter 12. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 12. And Jesus is speaking here in verse 38. Matthew 12, verse 38. Then certain of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from you. We want to see a miracle. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there shall be no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Notice that. Jesus Christ believed the story of Jonah. This was no fishy story. This was true. And Jesus Christ picked it out. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Well, we're going to cut, cut, we're going to go to a short break. Please don't go away. I want to explain to you that God is fair. We'll be right back. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. We also have other pain-relieving braces available for shoulder, ankle, and your back. 
Call the number on your screen right now to immediately receive a pain relieving brace at little or no cost. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low cost airlines. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call now. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business. According to the secret war, banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get the secret war free. Call the number on your screen or visit online. Hey, Grandpa, come play catch. Uh, well... Don't you want to play catch with me? I want to, but my back doesn't. It hurts so bad I can barely... Oh. Has this ever happened to you? You could qualify for a pain relieving back brace at little or no cost to you. Call the pain relief hotline now. Catch it! Wow, Grandpa, it's going so high. Call the pain relief hotline now to get your pain relieving back brace. Welcome back to the program. In case you tuned in late, we're doing part two of the question, is God fair? Now, if God had something to do with Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma coming up the coast following Hurricane Harvey, and if God had something to do with it, then a lot of innocent men, women, and children are suffering right now and are going to suffer from the effects of Hurricane Irma and what follows the destruction of one of the greatest hurricanes to hit our country. Well, it's the destined for Florida. We're going to see which way it turns. And we're going to know what's going to happen as it travels through. So the question is, is God fair? Well, here was Jonah. He was told to go to Nineveh. This was the Assyrian people. They were a very cruel people. They were one of the cruelest people of their time. They would take the captives and they would drill a hole through their nostril from one side to the other, and they would put a ring in there. Then they would tie that ring with rope, and they would do the same thing with the person in back and tie it with rope, and they would have a long line of captives. And one man would be at the front of the line, one soldier would be at the front of the line, he would pull on that rope, the first person's nose would start bleeding, he would feel the pain, he would start moving, the second person's, his nose would bleed, he would start moving, and this whole line of people would have to march in unison to keep from, to keep from harm, from, from bleed, their nose bleeding, from the pain that this one soldier could inflict on a whole line of captives. Very cruel people. So Jonah said, I'm going to go the other way. So he booked passage to go to Spain. And he was traveling to Spain on this ship. And God caused a great hurricane to come by and the ship was ready to flounder, and the men of the ship, Jonah told them, throw me overboard. They threw him overboard, and a great fish swallowed Jonah and started three days and three nights. Jonah was in the, the belly of the fish, and Jonah was being taken to the shores of 
Nineveh. And he was vomited out right on the shore. And he went, God told him that he needs to preach to the people of Nineveh. And he says, 40 days and this city's going to be destroyed. And all the men from the king on down to the lowest of the servants put on sackcloth and they were repenting before God. Jesus Christ, we just talked about it in Matthew chapter 12. You can read it in verses 38 to 41. Jesus said that these people repented. And now there's a greater than, than Jonah is here today. Now I wonder, I just wonder if a prophet would start walking up Amador Avenue uh, from Motel Boulevard and would work his way east and would stop at the mall on Telshore and start preaching that the city of Las Cruces is going to be destroyed in 40 days. I wonder how many people here in Las Cruces would repent. And as he would walk through the mall and tell hundreds of people that this city was going to be destroyed in 40 days, I wonder how many people in the mall would repent. I doubt very many. Let's go to Matthew chapter 19. What would be the most important question you could think of to ask Jesus Christ? Would it be this question that this young man came up to Jesus Christ in verse 16? And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Wow, that's a good question. That's a question we want to ask today. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Let's see what Jesus Christ told him. And he said unto him, Why call you me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if you will enter into life, Keep the commandments. Now, wait a second. He could have said, just believe on me and you'll have eternal life. He could have said, repent and be baptized and you shall receive the Holy Spirit and you shall have eternal life. Why did he say, but if you will enter into life, keep the commandments? Because if you break God's commandments, you're a sinner. And if you're a sinner, you're going to inherit the lake of fire. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6, verse 23. And he said unto him, which? Why did he say which? Because there were two sets of commandments. There were the commandments that Moses received at Mount Sinai, and there were the set of commandments that were the commandments of men. And Jesus said unto him, You shall do no murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Which set of commandments did Jesus tell him? That was the Ten Commandments actually the Ten Commandments. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're going back to Deuteronomy 28 and we're going to look at verse 1. God has a law that, that's for you and for me today. God's law is binding on us all. And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and do all his commandments. What did Jesus Christ say to the young man? 
If you will enter into life, keep the commandments, didn't he? Which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Now let's go drop down to verse 15. But it shall come to pass if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and do all his commandments and his statutes which I command you this day that these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Curses shall you be in the city, curses shall you be in the field, and it names all the curses. You can read that for yourself later on. We're coming to the end of the program. I want to explain to you that God is fair. I want you to look at my, visit my YouTube channel with What is Truth by Meyer Stahl. And I want you, I'd like you to send away for these two very important booklets, Where Are Enoch and Elisha? And Lazarus and the Rich Man, just call the number on the screen. We'll be happy to send them to you free of charge. And you're welcome to come to our Bible study. We have an interactive Bible study every Saturday at 1 o'clock at the meeting room at 1701 East Missouri. Bring your notebook, bring a pen, and bring your Bible, and bring your questions. We'd be happy to answer them. Well, folks, until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.